This is 3 News Daily. Hello there, everyone. Welcome back to 3 News Daily on this Friday, September 30th. I'm Stephanie Haney. Thank you for being here for our top stories from WKYC.com and our WKYC app. Let's get started with something we're getting more details about right now, a house fire that broke out overnight in Canton where nine people were rescued. One person is being treated in a hospital, and we do know that a firefighter was also injured. That firefight, uh, excuse me, that fire broke out near the back of a home on Raff Road at around 11 p.m., and six of the people inside were able to make it out on their own, but the Canton Fire Department was there to help three more people get out. And we know that one victim is in the hospital with serious burns. We also know that the firefighters' injuries, thankfully, are not life-threatening. Now to East Cleveland, where one person is dead and another person is in the hospital after a double shooting last night. East Cleveland police tell us that one man was found unresponsive at the intersection of Shea Avenue and Welton Drive. The second man was also found on Shea Avenue, but at the intersection at Plymouth Place. We don't yet know their names, but we do know that they were both taken to university hospitals. And this morning, unfortunately, we learned that one of them did not make it. Now in Akron, a grand jury has indicted a man on child rape charges. Timothy Luna is accused of raping children that he babysat. He was hired through Care.com. That's an online child care service, and it's kind of like Uber for babysitters. Luna is charged with six counts of rape, three counts of gross sexual imposition, and importuning. And if you're not aware, importuning means to approach someone for sexual services. The allegations come from at least three Northeast Ohio communities. Our Neil Fisher will have more details for us. That'll be starting at four o'clock. Now in health news, an Ohio person has died while infected with monkeypox. This is the first death related to monkeypox in Ohio only the second monkeypox death in the country. And according to the CDC, one of only 27 of these deaths worldwide. We know it was an adult male who tested positive for the virus, but that person also apparently had other health conditions. Infectious disease expert Dr. Joseph Gastaldo has some context for us on this. The fact that this virus has caused a death in the state is not unexpected, but it is very rare or otherwise very uncommon for people to get monkeypox virus infection and then die from it. We are working to confirm where this man was from and we'll keep you updated as we get more information about that. But right now, what you need to know is there are 276 cases in Ohio. Most of those cases are in Cuyahoga County. That's where 140 of those cases are. And 85 of those 140 cases are in the city of Cleveland. The good news is that case numbers for monkeypox are dropping across Ohio. And we have some sad news now for Browns fans. Former NFL tight end Gavin Escobar, who spent part of the 2018 offseason with the Cleveland Browns, has died in a rock climbing accident. Officials are telling us that he was one of two rock climbers who died in an accident in California on Wednesday. They were found dead during an attempted rescue by the Riverside County Fire Department. And the department said that the firefighters tried to hike to the location where they were, but the climbers had died by the time that they arrived. Now, following his retirement from football, Escobar was a firefighter himself for the Long Beach Fire Department. And according to the department, he leaves behind a wife and two children, and we're thinking of them today. Now, on the national stage, it looks like changes are coming to President Joe Biden's student loan forgiveness plan. New guidelines that were quietly published yesterday are shutting out certain borrowers whose loans are not held by the Department of Education. So before this, the Department of Education had said that borrowers who consolidated privately held federal student debt into direct loans would be able to qualify for forgiveness. But that will no longer be the case is what we're learning now. Eligible borrowers are still waiting for the government website to go live where they can file claims for loan relief. We're expecting that in the middle of October, but we'll keep you posted as we learn more. And the IX Center is hosting the Ohio Cannabis Health and Business Summit this weekend. Organizers say that the conference is meant to educate the community on the medical cannabis industry. So there will be educational workshops, keynote speeches, and discussions with cannabis pioneers. Now, if you're wanting to go but you don't have a medical marijuana license, that's okay because the officials say you don't need one. You can go ahead and get in without one. The doors are open Saturday and Sunday from 10 a.m. through 6 p.m. And our own Marissa Signs will have more information starting at 4 about what you'll find there. But you can find more details about the schedule on WKYC.com. Now, having already clinched the American League Central Division Championship, the Cleveland Guardians know they'll be playing this postseason. But the question is, 
who will they play? So with the Houston Astros and the New York Yankees having already secured the top two seeds in the American League, Cleveland is locked into the number three seed for the AL playoff. So that means the Guardians will host a best of three wild card round series that'll be right here at Progressive Field against the number six seed. And today, that team is slated to be the Tampa Bay Rays. So if it happened today, it would be Tampa Bay with their record of 85 to 71. Now they're heading into a three game series with the Houston Astros. The Rays are behind the number two wild card, the Seattle Mariners, by a half a game, and behind the top seeded wild card, the Toronto Blue Jays, by two games. Meanwhile, Tampa Bay has a five game lead over the Baltimore Orioles. For the American League's third and final wild card spot, with the wild card round taking place October 7th through the 9th. We've got a week away, so you can go to WKYC.com to see each wild card contender's remaining schedule. Now, St. Josephat Ukrainian Catholic Cathedral had a celebration today, and that celebration is because the church, which is located on State Road in Parma, is donating two ambulances to the front lines in Ukraine. Father Vladimir Ritsyuk blessed the ambulances before sending them off, and the church says this is all possible thanks to the greater Cleveland community and donations gathered at this year's Ukrainian festival. You're really seeing that in action. That's pretty cool. Okay. Here is what's coming up during What's New at 4 o'clock. Miles Garrett has been the talk of the town since his car accident this past Monday, and for the first time, he is speaking out. So stay with us to catch the latest directly from the mouth of the Browns' defensive end. Thank you very much for being here for 3 News Daily all week long and on this Friday. I hope you have a wonderful weekend, and we will be back with you on Monday for more 3 News Daily.